Presented by Botano, Nick Alberga and Jay Rosso back with you for some more news and two new assistant coaches to add to the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs this year, making four assistant coaches. So firstly, Guy Boucher, and second, somebody you uh, used to play with, Mike Van Ryan. Yeah, I just heard that, man. It's uh, it's very Leaf-like to have 12, 12 <laughs> staffers cruising around. But, um, you know, on one hand, the more the merrier. Uh, added two quality people, I believe. I don't know Guy Boucher too much, but I remember, you know, for the most part, the success that he had in Ottawa and uh, he was in Tampa and he was kind of been yeah. around as a guy that you kind of forgot about, to be honest, till I saw him and said, oh, yeah. Um, but Mike Van Ryan, Rhino, I, um, I played with him. He was kind of, his knee was destroyed and he was on the training table a lot trying to get that fixed up kind of the end of his career, sadly. But uh, great guy. I remember right as soon as I walked in the room, this guy was just, Rosie, get over here. And I'm like, I don't even know this guy. And he was so friendly, so kind, knew a bunch of stuff about me, was dying laughing because I had put up 275 pims up into that point and he's just dying laughing and I was just like this guy's fucking awesome so just sent him a text this morning he got back to me right away in Mike Van Ryan uh, form but I think he's going to be there I think he's going to be one of those guys that really helps out those players who just need an ear to bend who need a little bit of uh, you know a pick me up who are having a rough week go talk to Rhino for a while your your day will turn around in a big hurry. He spent the last five seasons on Craig Ruby's bench in St. Louis for us winning the Stanley Cup in 2019. And yeah, that was my lasting memory. He uh, played 27 games, excuse me, as a Maple Leaf in uh, 08, 09, I guess right around your time, right? Yeah, that was, uh, I got traded there and I remember he was on the table and he was his, I think it was his knee was just destroyed and uh, got to meet him that way. So he was around here and there, but again, didn't, uh, didn't get to play with them for like years or anything like that. But again, the fact that he left, left a lasting impression and I can reach out to him right now says a lot about the guy considering I wasn't shoulder to shoulder with him for years and years. I, uh, I know him quite well, I feel like, which is kind of a testament to his character. I think he's a, he's a really good addition to, uh, to this roster. Now you mentioned Guy Boucher, like I did the same. I'm like, what happened to this guy? I haven't heard from him in so long. I, I believe he was doing broadcast work for RDS uh, in Quebec, but He's known for his uh, famous 1-3-1 trap system, defensive mer- first type coach. He actually was involved in the hiring process when the Leafs hired Mike Babcock all those years ago. Guy Boucher was another guy. I believe they paraded through that locker room and he was close to getting the job. So it's it comes full circle and now he's on the bench here. Yeah, interesting. Because like you said, he was kind of everywhere there with uh, having a lot of success at the NHL level. And you'd think that would translate to uh, being in the spotlight for quite a while longer. But I guess he went and kind of did the RDS thing. I guess that's why I haven't seen him in a while. But uh, I don't know. I did a little Googling too. And Chris Neal was not a fan. I think he was on a podcast ripping him for some reason. And whether that holds any water or not is uh, is tough to say. Everyone's got their opinion on coaches. I've had a coach where one guy on the team hates his absolute guts and other guys want to make him their second father, you know. So uh, take all that with a grain of salt. But I don't think any of his, uh, you know, systems are going to be implemented immediately. I don't think he's going to have that much pull. I think he's kind of stepping back into a locker room and, and just giving support to the rest of the coaching staff. But I imagine he'll be in there kind of giving his opinion, breaking down some video, being part of the meetings and whatnot. And, you know, obviously a hockey mind who's had a success at, uh, at a high level. You've been in an NHL room. How much do assistant coaches matter in the long haul? Uh, interesting. I mean, they're, they're not make or break guys. Usually, um, they're usually a, l- a little bit more, you know, on that second stage, but for an individual player, um, if you take a liking or a shining to an assistant coach and you guys gel and you guys click, um, that relationship can mean a lot to an individual player. You can lean on that guy. You can go sit down on the bus, on the airplane. Hey, can we just go through my shifts here last game? I want to see what you think. Am I doing the right things here? Where am I supposed to be in this new system? And those assistant coaches are usually the guys breaking down the video. um, Pause, stop, rewind, laser pointer. Oh, this is where you need to be. You got to be a little lower. They just break it down and they've got a lot of knowledge. They put a lot of time into watching the team, watching the systems, coming up with all the the ins and outs and that kind of thing. So if you want to sit down and just bend his ear, shoot the shit, vent a little bit, bitch, complain, those guys can be a sounding board for you. And if you have the trust in them and and they trust you, you can do that without feeling like it's going to go up the ladder to the big boys. And again, just those personalities of 
assistant coaches, they can really click with an individual player and, and kind of build those relationships where it's not so much they're on the bench calling the shots. It's a different type of relationship. There you have it, two for the price of one. So Spencer Carberry out, Guy Boucher and Mike Van Ryan in.